Okay, well, that's good. This is the kickoff session for the EDO 2017 moderators. Uh, this is our first moderator training uh, session on the 16th of October 2016. It also happens to be Learning Together session 347. So we've done a few of them. My name is Vance Stevens. I'm an ally in United Arab Emirates. We have with us also, behind the scenes, behind that curtain over there, the wizard, Jeff LeBeau, who is handling the stream for us. So if you're listening on the stream, you have him to thank for it. And we also have with us our moderator for our EVO sessions, Mubarak Akata. And he's in Morocco, I believe. How are you tonight, Mubarak? Oh, fine. I'm very excited. Uh, well, uh, by the way, I, I, I start by thanking you very much and uh, thanking Jeff Lepo for the great technical work you have so far done to make this session uh, come to life. Well, uh, you don't know the half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At the same time, I'd like to welcome uh, the new moderators and the old ones and to say hi to my uh, coordinators, my members of the coordination team, like uh, Nelly, like uh, Elizabeth, uh, and others who are not, uh, let's say, who couldn't uh, attend the meeting. Well, uh, this is the launch or the kickoff of the training for moderators in which we are going to, let's say, to give you an overview of the session, uh, uh, of the objectives of the training, and uh, let's say what are the necessary uh, elements to, to have in your in your session in, in order to let's say prepare a, a successful session. If you allow me, I will start by let's say uh, presenting the timeline of of the of the EVO or CVO, Electronic Village Online. And of course, the work started with the call for proposal on, for, on the 4th of September. And of course, we, uh, let's say, conducted a very, uh, let's say, uh, powerful and uh, great campaign to, to let the word uh, heard. So we contacted uh, affiliates of TCL affiliates, ITCL affiliates, and uh, different communities and groups who are potentially interested in electronic village online. So we uh, got 23 uh, proposals, and it was uh, a record. It was great from different, uh, let's say, interesting subjects to electronic to. Uh, English teaching community all over the globe. We uh, uh, discarded or just uh, uh, overlooked two proposals because we didn't contain the uh, necessary requirements for proposals. And of course, we uh, accepted the others, uh, 21 session, 21 proposals, which are going to be, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, proposals for the sessions for Electronic Village Online 2017. Now, uh, the first task which we have started now is the, the moderator training. It is a four week uh, training which will be supervised by this uh, great coordination team, to which I say, by the way, thank you very much for the great work we have so far done to make it. This uh, uh, possible. Uh, Elizabeth Ann has done a great work in getting the wiki ready. Vance, of course, Nelly and Nina, Christine, uh, Jose, Maridana Ayat, Maria, Natasha, and uh, a lot of others. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, sorry if I forgot anyone. Well, uh, this is the coordination team who worked very hard to make uh, the Electronic Village Online 2017 
uh, possible. Now for the the statement of the evil con is which is part of a uh, group or an interest group of Tisha. Uh, it says that computer assisted language learning interest intersection uh, and which is uh, called is computer assisted language learning intersection. It maintains the representation within the stream committee of called is since 2001. And Vance, by the way, is one of the founders of uh, the webhead and uh, the electronic village online. And we have seen here along the, the history of of this community, and uh, by the way, we want we uh, let's say base our work on volunteers. And everyone, all members here are volunteers, moderators, coordinators, and uh, the mentors in, in, in any way. So uh, and the sessions are free, free for everyone, and we have some kind of we call them sessions uh, because we. Uh, we uh, don't want them to become the same courses with uh, the same formal and standard uh, the same requirements of the course. Mubarak, Mubarak yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, but your volume is very low and you're mumbling a little bit. It's barely audible. Can you increase your volume a bit? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Is this Elizabeth who talk to me? Yes? Yeah? Well, I was, uh, I'm giving my microphone next to me and I'm increasing the volume of uh, my mic. Here, uh, the Electronic Village Online is a free professional development project. Uh, it will come and encourages participation from different affiliates and different communities, different learning communities. It is non-commercial. And it is open to everyone from all over the world who wants to get, let's say, uh, who is interested and wants to, to improve his professional uh, practice. Uh, we, uh, regardless of the affiliations and others, we uh, are open to everyone. That this is the the essential message that the Electronic Village Online is for everyone, no matter how and no matter what affiliate he belongs to or a community he belongs to or she belongs to, of course. Uh, it is free of charge to participants. This is another uh, quality of uh, electronic village online sessions. They are free. Uh, nobody pays no cent to no one. Okay, so this is uh, an advantage, and this is one way to uh, to develop and to give, to share, to collaborate with no profits at all. Only the, the only profits we, we care for is professional development and helping each other and sharing with each other. Of course, uh, the Evo is a non-commercial activity sponsored by non-profit organization under Section 501. This is about TESOL, and of course, it is sponsored by TESOL. It doesn't mean that they pay money or they pay any cent to anyone. It's only a uh, kind of, uh, I would say, educational sponsorship or some giving us the, the umbrella to, to do our activities the, the, the way we do them. Uh, okay, so for the proposals we got this year, they are varied and they tackle different issues in English language uh, teaching, in computer assisted learning, in internet, in different things related to teaching and learning. We have here classroom based research and professional development, developing the intercultural competence through the use of online resources, design thinking, online assessment. Electronic Village, uh, Minecraft. This is, by the way, one of the old, uh, oldest uh, and most successful uh, sessions. Experience learning. There are, of course, others like flip learning and 
uh, MOOC for teachers and others, uh, and ICT for health. There are very successful uh, sessions, but at the same time, there are sessions to which we get we receive for the first time, and we hope to let's say make a close follow up with them, so as to help them to help their teams in case they need uh, kind of guidance or uh, let's say any kind of help to make their uh, proposals ready by the call for proposal. So along these four weeks, we expect that we work together in order to make the proposals ready and, of course, to uh, uh, discuss, to share, to okay, uh, have a clear idea of the objective we want to achieve with our session. So we have here ICT for Air integrating uh, English language learning into countries area. Mm, LL. I don't remember even what it means, but it stands for for me. So we have to check for this. Moodle for teacher or Moodle for this is by uh, Dr. Nelly, Dr. Nelly, who has been given this session for years. It is one of the most successful two, most successful sessions. And then native uh, English speakers in TESOL, uh, I think this is uh, uh, by Aiden, Aiden who was a uh, coordinator of Electric Village Online. And she came back as now as a moderator to give this session with her team. So we have a lot of interesting, or well, they say, uh, 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 very interesting uh, sessions and proposals which touch and tackle everything related to English language learning. I'm sorry if I cannot uh, go through all the proposals, but of course you have uh, them on the wiki and you can just uh, check and exchange and see what others do in order to get a clear idea of what you should uh, be doing yourself. Well, for the training we are, uh, we have started today by this uh, kickoff session. It is a four-week and on workshop to help moderators and uh, co-moderators. I mean, the people or the moderators who help the lead moderator to uh, convert the syllabus we have proposed into interactive online sessions for the electronic language online. This is what we talked about, of course. So each session will be assigned a mentor. This is not all sessions, of course. By mentorship, we simply mean. Uh, uh, assigning somebody who has more experience to help and to give guidelines, uh, but not all sessions need uh, mentors. So we, this year we agreed that only new sessions uh, uh, should be assigned uh, mentors. However, some sessions who have two years or come for the, the the second time, they will be. Let's say checked, and uh, let's say uh, we will see if they need. We will discuss with them and see if they need a mentor or not. So, if they require a mentor, we will assign a mentor for them. Okay. So now, of course, the training objectives are, uh, as of course, uh, we have to hear actively identify the features that distinguish uh, the electric village online from other online courses. And uh, the most important thing is this. We have to get our proposals revised, refined, completed. Uh, and of course, we have to be given the considerations and suggestions from the coordination team, especially for uh, sessions which have uh, sessions which need uh, moderators. Okay, so <laughs> I have come to an end. I'm sorry if I, I've been uh, a bit long. Um, just I wanted to uh, sum up that uh, this training is for moderators, and I really hope that even experienced moderators participate in this training and uh, let's say participate in the discussions and help new moderators, uh, especially in, inside within their teams and. Uh, uh, with other teams which are not really, uh, which don't have enough experience in the, in giving 
conducting uh, session. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you, Mubarak. Let me see. I'm going to switch on a video so that actually has something to look at. It's me, Vance. And I suppose uh, it'll look better in the stream if you could, uh, if, if anyone who's talking can put on their video. I'll switch it off when I stop talking. But um, what I, I'm not sure what's next in the program, but maybe I could say that if anybody wants to uh, introduce themselves or say anything about their session, is that what we might have in mind now, Mubarak? Yeah, I thank everyone who uh, uh, Nelly is here and uh, Elizabeth Ann uh, 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 is here too. They are welcome to say a word. Okay, so then uh, if someone, uh, if the coordinators would like to uh, chime in, you can say what you're doing uh, as part of the team. I guess what I'm doing is I'm trying to manage this particular session and I'm also a, a a moderator of EVO Minecraft MOOC. And, um, but anyway, uh, if another coordinator would like to come on. We heard from Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ann earlier. We usually hear from Nellie. She's not shy. Yeah, I'm not uh, shy. If you want me to talk. <laughs> um, I don't know if my video is working. Uh, it looks like it's not. In any case, um, Ah, it is working. Okay, so can you see me? I don't know if it's going through yes, or not. We can hear you. Uh, you can see yeah. you. Yes, uh -huh. And you can see me? Great. All right. So um, I guess what I'm bringing is uh, my experience. Um, I've been um, teaching online through Moodle and I guess other platforms uh, for over 10 years, I guess. and um, I wanted to say if anyone's interested in uh, a Moodle platform, they want to use Moodle, they could use uh, my Moodle. Um, just let me know. I'm going to be um, moderating uh, Moodle for Teachers and um, teaching EFL to young learners and helping out in some other new, uh, I guess I'll be mentoring. Uh, QR codes and um, uh, assessment, online assessments. So I'm really excited about uh, EVO sessions. As I always say, uh, EVO is a special time of the year for me. It gives me a chance to connect and to feel that I'm giving, for, giving to others, or at least learning together with others uh, for free. And I, and I like the concept of free. I think that the idea behind the session was to encourage others on the value of taking the training, even though uh, you may be an experienced online moderator and teacher. Um, you know, if you could maybe list in the chat box, what are the values of doing this together as a team this year? By the way, uh, Nina and uh, Jose Antonio are here too. They are welcome to, to join us. Uh, this is Elizabeth um, in again. I'm following the chat in Blackboard Collaborate. And the question <laughs> has been asked, uh, who has already participated in an EVO session? Now, um, the the answers are not super clear. So I would like to ask everyone in the Blackboard Collaborate and in Chatwing to answer yes if they have not, repeat, not participated in uh, an EVO session before. Ah, Nick is new. Anyone else new? Switch off my mic. So say yes if you are new and have never moderated or even participated in an EVO session before. I guess it's moderated, no? I don't know. Uh, 
Okay, so it, it seems as if the, most of the people here... Oh, Jenny is new as well. Okay, so we've got Jenny, Anne and Nick who are new. Uh, and Martha. Oh, you have... Yeah, okay, not moderated before. That's great. Um, because uh, I then have another question to ask because PB Works is kind of um, starting to become slightly clunky because in the free platform there's no mobile. Um, so could I ask the question if you are using PB Works for your session, if you know already? If we're using PB Works, if we know that we're using it, you mean? And sorry, I meant because some people haven't decided their um, their platforms yet. Yes, I, I've noticed no problem at all with PB Works. I'm a long-time user, so uh, I think my sons have told me that as new users, they're having trouble getting the free. It's not the same experience for them. Yeah, you know anything exactly, about that? Exactly. Exactly. Um, they used to have free wikis for educators, but they've they've discontinued that. The, those of us that have an an educator's account are were apparently grandfathered in. I can create a new one, but I think maybe there's a limit. You can only create three, or you can only create one something like that. Yeah, I think people like me, who even look like a grandfather, uh, I have, um, I've got dozens of them and uh, they're all working fine. I just have to keep editing them. So I just check the, uh, uh, the list of my wikis, organize, sort them by the date last modified and just make sure I add something uh, I usually put a date, my, uh, updated on this date, and then just keep them ticking over that way. But you have to kind of maintain that, otherwise they'll delete them. Yeah, but, I'm uh, letting them get deleted for the most part because the wikis that I that I have now that I'm retired, I I don't need most of them anymore. Okay, so what do we recommend if you're in that situation? Elizabeth? Uh, well, I, I mean, I do love PB Works, and I think it does give um, uh, uh, a peer platform, if it is correctly <laughs> created. And um, Nelly says the Wikispaces are good too. Now, uh, Wikispaces, you used to have to pay after a while. So when we started out, we went PB Works. And personally, I know PB works much better than Wikispaces, although now they don't do that anymore. You can set up a Wikispace and you don't have a, you're not cut off. Um, and uh, I saw um, one of the sessions last year, uh, or two of the sessions last year, actually used um, Google Sites which was difficult to find. It doesn't, um, it's sort of hidden in the Google things, but it seems to be quite useful with the possibility of allowing several editors, which is always the advantage of, of PV Works. For the moment, I would say, yes, yeah, stay with PV Works. But um, I think we need to look into Wikispaces, and certainly I would recommend Google Sites now although they have the limitations as well. Ah, uh, I, use use Google, Google sites. Uh, I use Google Sites too, and I find them very useful. And uh, they are not really difficult. I, I, I think even that PB works are more difficult than Google Sites, because on the Google Sites page, everything is, is, is there. You can just click on a few links, and then you get the page modified. Yeah, I agree. They have lots of advantages for ease, ease of use. But on the other hand, 
um, you can't always embed everything you want to. They don't take iframes, which is quite a pain. And each time I try to put an add-on to be able to add an iframe, I have difficulties with that. So the iframe allows you to embed from anywhere, of course. And that you can do on PBWorks. So you don't have control over the source code in Google Sites? Because most of them you can you can do it, the, use the WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, or you can use the um, um, I don't think there is. I don't think there is a code source code. No, I don't think there is that. You only okay. See what you what, what you drag, for example, a, a picture, and then you just resize it, and it is there. There is no code to modify things. Okay, this is what I learned. Right. Of course, that is the great advantage of um, PB words for people who are not afraid of programming because you can get the HTML code very easily. I don't think you can for Google Sites. I don't know. What about um, those of us who who have been using PB Works, creating a wiki for sessions that would like to use it, but can't get a free one, and then making those people administrators. Would that work? I did that last year for people in, I can't remember which Eastern European country. There were two people in an Eastern European country who were not allowed to create PB works, and yet they were editing the uh, the session PB works with no problem. So I made them, I made one for them and gave them administrator, and that seemed to work fine. One of them is continuing, but I'm afraid I'm not looking after it, so it might just disappear. I don't know. It, it must have been the Ukrainians. <laughs> there was a big group of Ukrainians last year. Certainly, everything changes so quickly. It seems now to be more difficult to keep up. Is this just uh, of getting past it? What do other people think about keeping up with changes? Maybe we could, since we're halfway into the hour, maybe we could get some uh, moderators to ask us things that they might be concerned about or how you know, uh, that keep up question how how will they catch up how will they uh, how will we what, what do we need to do to help them just to let you know that anybody is welcome to speak here Hello, everybody. Carolina from Colombia here. I'm a coordinator this year, and um, I'm an assistant coordinator. <laughs> and Kaiki has a question. She wants to know how many participants were there in total last uh, Evo sessions, 2016. Yeah, in 2016, there were 8,000. 660, no, 561, I think. About the big, yeah. Let me check just a little. Uh, so it, it, is, it was more than, uh, more than uh, 8,000 participants. Okay, just a minute. Oh, I see Neve has been able to get in. Um, she was having bandwidth problems from Italy, so welcome. And 
as we've said, if anybody has any questions. Um, I don't think we really had an agenda. It's really hard to know what we're going to do in these sessions. A lot of times we have a lot of people with problems getting in. Uh, that's why we set up a stream uh, so that we could catch those people. But even that is a little bit problematic. You know, Hangouts on air, you may, I, I suppose you're aware that they don't operate as they did before. So you can't just go to Google Plus and uh, click on a Hangout on Air. It sends you to YouTube. And well, that's fine. It's about the same, except that uh, the Hangouts are still there. But in order to stream it, you need to download an encoder. And we were having a lot of trouble, Jeff and I, with the encoders that we were using. There was a, an open source coder, open broadcast um, well, I can't remember this C stands for, but anyway, it's open broadcast. Oh, open OBC, open broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's the encoder we were using, and it's fairly easy to use, but it wasn't letting us set up events and stream them. So Jeff found another encoder just in the wee hours last night, and uh, it's called X. Dick or something like that, and I can't remember. Anyway, we'll let you know if it works. But um, he's streaming through that now, so it's a little bit problematic uh, trying to get your streams working. If you do set up Hangouts, and you're limited to ten people, and it was kind of necessary to stream them um, in order to get more people in the way we're doing now. So, uh, although Blackboard Collaborate allows many users to come. I don't really know how many, but we, we've we never really stressed it as far as I know. And But it's it's that when they went over to this new collab file, they download the new meeting file. It's not easily found on Windows 10, Windows 8. Uh, it, several computers are having trouble with it. So until the user gets sorted out so you can easily get into Blackboard Collaborate, then um, the, the stream is useful to take people who aren't able to come here directly for whatever reason. So uh, anyhow, the, the this is a, a challenge we're facing now is that uh, we would like to set up an event. You would like to set up events. Uh, you can set events if you use Google Plus, for example. That, that's a really nice social site that will set events for you and broadcast them to any circles or communities you tell it to broadcast to. And um, so that's one thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to run events like this and organize so that people can meet you at certain times. And that's changing a little bit with the changes in Hangouts on Air, because that was just the perfect way to do it. Um, and it streamed really nicely, and you didn't have to worry about setting it up. But anyway, uh, yes. that's yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, sorry that to cut you, but I uh, just wanted to add um, the exact statistics of last year. We had 8,561 participants from 72 countries. We had uh, 87 moderators, and we had 14 sessions, of course, in addition to 12 uh, 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 coordinators. These are the, uh, the same. It was a huge number, of course, last year. And we really hope that we would keep the same record this year. Yeah. OK. Uh, Nick uh, Spart has just pointed out that that is called XSplit. So that looks like something that we can learn from Nick about. And um, he's just pointed out in the chat that you can find uh, the broadcast uh, encoders at YouTube itself, but some of them are uh, not free, and some of them put watermarks on. So it's good to know which ones to choose. But yes, XSplit sounds like a good one. I believe that's what Jeff is using tonight. So it's a little bit challenging. We'll try to work through that in training. And I guess Nick can help us here. Um, and Nick, if you want to say a few words about your background in streaming, you're quite welcome. What, what session are you in? What session are you moderating? 
You have no mic, but that's okay. Split free is watermark. I, ah, can, uh, um, I can speak for Nick because he's part of our evil session village in Second Life. Nick Swart uh, has a company called 3D Less and he specializes in open sim installations. Um, as maybe some of you know, open sim installations are a copy of Second Life, just set up on private servers and usually have access restrictions to a certain number of people. Uh, free of charge and Nick uh, is a programmer and coder and uh, we are thrilled that he's part of the Evo Village team this year. Uh, as last year he already provided some fantastic games, <laughs> uh, well programmed games, I mean a programming that we teachers only a dream of. <laughs> So uh, he's he's the absolute tech uh, person when it comes to uh, 3D worlds, virtual worlds. <laughs> well, we're very glad to meet you, Nick, and uh, I'm glad you're part of the EPO moderator team as well, and uh, we can possibly get you to help us a little bit with some of our streaming issues. Um, and that was Heike Felt, who was just talking to us from Germany. Go ahead, the next question. Um, I can also just say a quick hello to everybody. Um, been very thrilled. Again, I'm very grateful to Evo for being what it is, which is a fantastic event each year to, for, for a number of us to be able to try out. <laughs> Hi, everyone. A number of us to try out um, our new developments and to try out our um, yeah, the things we would like to present to participants. Now, the one thing that interests me, if I may ask this question, um, as so many of us who've been around for a while, is the EVO moderator training, has it somewhat changed or is it the same this year as it was last year? And the reason I'm asking is because I think we should now sort of um, add a component that says how do you cope? as a MOOC with large numbers. I mean, look at the CLIL session. I mean, they've, they've had a handful, you know. It, it, we, we've certainly moved as EVO from small workshops to MOOCs, yeah? <laughs> and so I think this should have a, a special attention by the coordination team to do, um, to add in the uh, session. The other thing I've always wanted to ask and I've been asking for a number of years is will there be a uh, joint calendar um, at some time or the other because we would love to also share our synchronous sessions that take place across the border for even maybe some of the moderators interested in, in joining synchronously. So a, uh, an evil calendar. <laughs> And uh, thank you for sharing the numbers. Do we have anyone who's good at Google calendars? It seems that um, if um, if we kept Google calendars, we could then merge them into an EBO calendar. Uh, apart from that, it's uh, you're really sort of having to add, like you could write on the Learning Together calendar, for example. You, you're welcome to do that, but then that's kind of push, you have to push that, whereas if you just kept your own calendar and could merge it, uh, that would be uh, the solution that comes off the top of my head anyway. So I think it would be a little challenging to get all the sessions to use a Google Calendar. Um, that's just my first impression. I do know that Mabotic brought this up in the, in the coordinator space, uh, I think it was this week that he would like to have an all EVO calendar on. I think it's a fabulous idea. Yeah, well, we tried it last year, if you remember, and we have it, we still have it last year on, on the wiki, training wiki on the front page, uh, front page. No, the EVO online, the wiki for coordinators. Uh, our intention last year was that we would use Google Calendar and, of course, uh, use it as a task manager at the same time and reminder, which sends notifications and reminders. Uh, it's challenging, frankly, because when you find only a member or two who don't 
really know how to use the calendar, it becomes really uh, not uh, an effective tool to use. However, its potentials are great, and we, I personally would love to use it with all the management of the coordination and the moderation teams. Maybe we could assign uh, somebody on the coordination team to be in charge of the calendar, and anybody that wasn't able to do their own calendar for whatever reason didn't want to uh, could just send announcements to that one coordinator who could uh, add events to the calendar. Okay, for me, I, I, I'd love to help anyone who would like to, to add his calendar to his session. Okay. It's not, it's not really difficult, only a few steps you will get a calendar and you add events and tasks and to only give the dates and you save it. You can, when you display, for example, you choose the way to display if you want all one calendar or two or more all calendars at the same time. These options are clear in Google Calendar. Yeah, I think we could learn how to use the Google Calendar. Uh, that would be very useful for us all to know. Um, and I've, I've seen, uh, it, well, and, and just heard just now the suggestion that someone gets sent notices and that person maintains the calendar. Uh, that's not, I, I think the best thing to do, ideally, would you would have that aggregating tool like the Google Calendar that people could keep their own calendars and then they have to enter the data um, even uh, something something like uh, the um, the calendar, which I forgot to enter this session into, but the one that we have to use. If you're going to use the Blackboard Collaborate room, you have to reserve it. Uh, that's very important. And uh, sometimes sure, when yeah. people, people write there and they don't and they want me to change things. That's fine. I really don't mind doing it because there's no way they can do it. But uh, it's these, these little things, if they come up often enough, they can become a real, uh, a real chore for someone if you know, someone has to track events. And sometimes people change their events, and that has to be chat tracked. And uh, if one person is doing that, it's, it's not really viable for that one person if that person is busy doing other things. Yep, I agree. Now, uh, I shouldn't forget to remind all moderators that they have to take a, a, a survey, especially the, the one before training and the other uh, after training. These, let's say, uh, give us some, they are very useful for us uh, in, what, in matters of statistics and getting feedback and recommendations for what we should do in the next uh, training session. I wanted to hearken back to um, Heike's first question, which was, is the moderator training the same every year? Is it the same as it was last year? Um, and it's basically the same, but we, we do add things, like adding a calendar is a great idea. Um, a couple of years ago, we, we added um, consideration of certificates of participation and badges. And the the question the question comes up about experienced moderators and do they really need to participate in the training? The training consists of two two broad parts. One is uh, learning about EVO and how it works and how it doesn't work. And for those people who have not uh, taught online or uh, done on, uh, online education before, uh, giving them some basic ideas about how to do that and how not to do that. But the other part is to um, to get your session ready to go. It, the sessions need to be ready to go by December the 1st, or they won't be included. That's why we tell you that you've 
been provisionally accepted. Your proposal has been provisionally accepted because it has to be really ready to go by December the 1st. So we expect everybody to participate in that second part. Um, we expect new people to participate actively in the first part and we welcome uh, experienced moderators' participation because they're, ex they're sharing their experience uh, is a really vital part of the training for the new people. I don't know if I expressed that very clearly, but yes, if you are an experienced moderator, we, we want you back. Uh, you do need to get your session ready in time and we would appreciate you sharing your expertise. No, we don't expect you to reread every article that we recommend, but we hope that you will hang out a little bit, follow the conversation, and uh, join in and share what has worked and not worked for you. Yeah, on this uh, question of, well, a couple of questions. One, the way uh, EVO functions as a MOOC and uh, and often has sessions that are like a MOOC, and also the fact of, as to whether or not we change it. I'm going to put in the text chat a link to the Google Plus community that we've just started, and we'd like for you to join it because that's how we can function as a MOOC and that's how we can change things. Uh, we can take the conversation to a place that we, we can each control. So uh, you can post in the Google Plus community. Uh, it, if you use one, you probably have seen its affordances and if you haven't, this is a good place to learn. Um, but the Google Plus communities are, they, they, if you join them, then you can Ask, you can bring up things uh, like, for example, how do you deal with uh, uh, so many people in your session? That kind of thing can actually become its own uh, conversation. People can post uh, to each other and help each other because the coordinators can't really do it all. Uh, but we can we can take what, you're, what we hear here and we can try to drive things in that direction, but we're not the real drivers. You should be the drivers, all the moderators. And in fact, and when you run your session, the participants are the drivers. Uh, Dave Cormier calls that the community as curriculum. But that's one extreme, but in any event, um, that, that's, that's what we're, you know, to experience that kind of thing, you should get involved in our Google Plus community because it's a very good uh, way to see how you can drive what goes on here and, and not make it the same as last year. Uh, so. <laughs> I would I would love to hear from some of the moderators here, and maybe uh, some of the coordinators that are here could just jump in and and introduce themselves. My name is Nina Liakos. I'm. Uh, in Maryland in the United States near Washington, D.C. I've been involved with the EVO in some capacity since 2006, um, so a decade. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you today. Well, uh, for me, uh, I started uh, with the uh, tips and tricks, which was a session in 2008. Then I uh, moved to another session called uh, Becoming Overbearing. And then uh, after that, I became a moderator in Becoming Overbearing. Then we, uh, the team moved, we created uh, ICT for end with GA, Maria, Ayat, Vitlana. Mariana and lots of other, let's say, moderators. Then I was invited to join the coordination team two years ago. Um, really, I really encourage everyone to work hard and to be sharing and collaborative and to help each other. This is a great learning community for everyone. Yeah. Hello. Uh 
Can you hear me? This is Jose, Jose Antonio, JA. Okay, I'm speaking from Brazil, Brazil. Okay, um, like Nina, also I, I got involved in EVO in 2006. It's a great uh, learning community. I always kept, I kept like coming back for more. So in 2008, I became a moderator, like a moderator like Mubarak from from uh, in the becoming a web head, you know, and then uh, we, uh, like he said, we have ICT for EOT. I want to add some of the things. I, I agree with Dan, and you know, has said, you know, uh, we do uh, run into problems, but you always have this uh, great network of support, which is the web head community, the people, the coordinators, the moderators. And uh, so if uh, like dealing with large crowds, many times you can uh, ask us what to do, what strategy to adopt, you know. Uh, I've been learning a lot uh, throughout these years and um, it's always, there's always someone that can help you like we did with the Google Calendar just some minutes ago. Uh, okay, we will learn, we'll find a way to uh, set that up, you know, so it's like, uh, I think the power of many, you know. Uh, I believe in connectivism. Nobody knows everything. Everybody knows something. And we get together and we make it happen, you know. So that's what I believe, you know. But it's a great pleasure to be here. And looking forward for these uh, sessions that are coming. Uh, like Nina said, it's really important that you get your sessions ready, you know, start working on them uh, and uh, get them ready for December and then uh, everything will be fine, okay, and the problems we have, okay. Like they say, we'll cross the bridge when it comes to it. You will always, we can always anticipate some things, but things happen. We, uh, there's always a community to support us, you know. That's the good thing about EVO. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. Um, Carolina Rodriguez from Bogota, Colombia. Um, pretty new at EVO. I started in 2014. Um, I was invited to participate in the coordination team this year. Last year, I was a moderator for flipped learning. Uh, this year, I'm also a moderator for flipped learning. And um, just as Jose Antonio and um, Nina and everyone here, I have said it, and I will repeat it, and I will never get tired of saying it. Evil has changed my professional development and my life. Um, it's a great space of educators who love uh, technology, love teaching, love learning. And this is something that I had never found anywhere else. So I will never leave Evil. <laughs> I'll stay as long as they let me stay. And um, this is a great opportunity for learning. Uh, the moderator's training is great. Last year I learned a lot of techniques with a lot of people who have been working with technology for quite some time. So even though I think I am pretty good at using technology, I still learned a lot of things. And so this is, is a great learning opportunity. It's an amazing community of practice. And um, I think we are up to something really great starting right now and finishing when we finish, you know, the EVO sessions in February. So welcome to all moderators. Um, get ready, you know, to get your life changed forever. So welcome, everyone, and I'm really, really happy to be here. Hi, everyone. I'm Martin. I incorporated into EVO um, as, a, as a participant um, in the sleep learning EVO session this year, and I will be moderating, uh, co-moderating um, this year. I'm very excited. I agree with Carolina. I think these sessions are wonderful. The fact that they're free, the fact that everyone is so willing to share what they know and learn from each other is wonderful. It's also changed my life. Um, as a consultant, as a teacher trainer, as a, and as a teacher. So I'm very, very excited. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Jenny from Karlsruhe, Germany. Can you hear me? I just wanted to say I'm uh, um, Olya kindly asked if I would help with the teaching listening, and this will be the first time I'm a moderator. 
Um, I participated in three, well, half, <laughs> three years in a row. The first year in week two, I had a bike accident. The second year in week two, <laughs> I had an emergency dental operation. And then just before the first week last year, I ended up on crutches. So we've got our fingers crossed <laughs> that I will actually be able to do the whole thing <laughs> next year as a moderator. <laughs> so let's, uh, I'll, I hope I'm not going to be jinxed as a moderator. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to working with you all. A little nervous about it, see what happens next time. But <laughs> no accident yet. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. No accident this time. So. I'll be especially careful riding in the snow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
uh, he, he's put it in the text chat. But uh, and you can talk to us, Jeff. Why don't you come on and tell us what you're typing? Why not? Hello, everybody. This is Jeff. Uh, not sure why my webcam isn't on, but it's no great loss. Um, uh, in the end, it's coming up to midnight, and I will be uh, heading to bed very soon and ending the simulcast. But I think we're down to two viewers, and I'm one of them. Uh, so to our other viewers, <laughs> thanks for hanging in with us. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, uh, Nick has just noticed that uh, the, the encoder you recommended, he recommended it himself. So I'm definitely going to look into that. And just, I'm, I'm burning with curiosity. That solved the problem. It was the encoder that would not let us set the event and then get the stream going. Is that correct? With uh, Open Broadcasting Studio, they just won't, it doesn't connect. Or it connects, and it prepares, but then it, it just doesn't give you a, OK, start streaming now. With uh, XSplit, you just kind of sync it with your YouTube account, and you can start a new live stream, or it will also show any scheduled events, and you just click which one you want to stream to. Yeah, well, I sure I'm glad that you had some time. Two heads are better than one. I pointed out the problem to Jeff having been dealing with it for about two weeks trying to get the events to work. And um, anyway, so Jeff found the solution overnight. So thanks a lot, Jeff. We'll smash ahead from here. Well, as, as we always learn during EVO, webheads never sleep. There's always a webhead awake somewhere working on something. Yep, now we'll teach it to everybody else. And on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and say good night <laughs> and go to sleep and turn off the uh, simulcast. But it's been <laughs> a pleasure tuning in. A happy EVO to all. I hope you uh, build up some kind of reservoir of sleep because you'll probably need it come January. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jeff. Really appreciate it. OK, and I suppose we could be considering ourselves winding down. Uh, it's always nice to get voices. I would not stop the recording if someone speaks. So if you click on the talk button and you want to say uh, anything, just to get your voice on the recording, I will be here until that stops. But what I normally do is I kind of let things wind down and then stop the recording. And in order to close the session, we actually have to have everybody out of the room. So. And I believe, yes, it's Mircea, my co-moderator, Mircea, is here. Mircea, you should say something about Minecraft. I hope that you'll do that. It's so nice of one of my co-moderators to be here. Um, anyhow, OK, so let's just keep the mics open. And you're welcome to, to talk and say things if you want, and put up a video if you like. No problem there. OK, I'll turn this over to the next microphone. Is there anybody else who would like to jump on, grab a mic, and say hello? Well, I just would like to say thank you to everyone. Thanks to all coordinators who were here. Thanks to the new moderators who attended. I'm sorry I lost to leave too. I am supposed to stay with them till the end, but I have a commitment and I have to, to leave. So thank you everyone and goodbye. Okay, thank you very much. We're winding down the um, EVO moderators 2017 first uh, first events. Our kickoff for our month-long moderator training. This is also Learning Together, session 300, episode 347. And that's winding down as well, simultaneously. And uh, it's the 16th of October, 2016. And I'm going to say good night. And uh, yes, thank you, Nellie. Nellie, I, I said that before you prompted me. OK. We always prompt each other to give dates, because we, we hear so many podcasts and even sometimes newscasts like I love Amy Goodman 
but she never gives the dates. But anyway, probably by design. In any event, I always appreciate when I'm listening to a podcast if they tell me when it was recorded. So uh, I'm not going to go on and on. I'm going to let this wind down. And if I, if people don't leave the room of their own accord, then I'll probably just gently nudge them toward the door because we have to get everybody out of the uh, session before we can before it gets recorded at Illuminate. And I'll be making an Illuminate recording, which usually is good audio quality. So thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Um, and if you want to say good night, please do.